Okay, we're here with Chris today, and we are looking at Chris's left knee, which he's got ITB syndrome. Now, Chris is getting it from running, yep. right? And he's getting the classic ITB syndrome where he's getting inflammation around the ITB where that burst is. Now, if I bend his knee up, here's his lateral femoral condyle, that hard bit. The bursa sits in underneath that. Now, his ITB is coming in here. You can see this chunk coming in here. And it's basically putting a lot of pressure on that bursa over the bone. So he was getting a lot of inflammation here, and that was his main cause of, well, main cause of symptoms, right? Um, now, we've got to work out why he's getting that. It's all very well and good having, okay, he's got ITB syndrome in his run, but why is he getting that? Now, when we look at his knee more closely, I mean, yes, he's got a tight ITB. So you can see this, this band here is pretty tight, so that puts a lot of pressure on. And that usually means he needs to do a bit of foam rolling. His glutes are probably tight, a little bit weak. We're working on some stuff up there. Um, but on his left side, it's a lot looser. So his, loose, his, left, sorry, his right side, he's looser here. So there is a definite difference there and we need to loosen it up, so foam rolling for the ITB. But getting in there, but not getting a right in over that femoral condyle because that's going to irritate him. He needs to ice that area, but he doesn't want to hammer it because that's where the swollen bursa is. So we want to try and just avoid that. He wants to foam roll all the way up into his glute and that sort of thing. So that's one, but why is that happening? Now, when I look closely at him, everyone who's got ITB issues here usually has a weakness in the VMO here. Now, if you come up on here, let's have a look at this. If you look down on his knee, okay, compared to his right one, can you see his kneecap here on his right is sitting what we call nice and flush? This one on his left, can you see there's a bit of a difference here? There's a bit of a shadow going on here. And that's because this kneecap is actually sitting in a patella tilt that or a lateral patella tilt. So there's more depth here, which you can see. And I can get my finger right and under. There's quite a lot of depth here. So I'm getting in under like the medial side of his patella facet here. Whereas this one, see I can't do that, see I can't do that, so here I've got right and under, there. I can get right under the fold there. So that means his kneecap actually sits on an angle, alright, and his tissues on here will be very tight, which leads to this problem as well. So his kneecap, when I try and tilt it this way, I, I can't really get any range out of it because he's so stiff that way. Um, whereas this one... I can tilt him quite a bit, I can move him quite a bit, I can move that kneecap around, he's pretty good. And as a result, because he's tilted like that, if you imagine his femoral groove here, his patella sitting there, he's tilted like this, so he's really pressurizing the lateral side. And this is very common in runners where the lateral facet of the, fem of the patella and the femur get a lot of pressure, so the, all the pressure's on that lateral facet instead of distributed across the whole patella and that leads to a lot of wear and tear. And people get clicking. Now I can move that across. You feel that little yeah. click in there. And he's got a little click on that cartilage. And that can be sometimes a little bit of plica caught in there as well because if the two surfaces are sort of rammed together, he gets a bit of catching on the plica, or it can be a little bit of wear and tear on that facet. And sometimes that can go really bad and get some osteoarthritis at an early age. But at the moment, what we're trying to do is um, get that a little bit better, and I'll show you what we're doing with here. So, Always with the lateral tilt of that, you're going to have a drop in VMO. Because remember, the VMO is attached to that patella coming in obliquely. Now, if you imagine this patella is sitting up, of course, there's going to be a bit of a, a lengthening there, so he's going to be a bit weaker. So if you squeeze your right for me, see he's got a nice sort of teardrop showing of his VMO there. Squeeze his left. It's there, but he just, and he's got tone, but it's a bit, a little bit mushy. Mm -hmm. isn't it? He just doesn't have as much bulk. So when you don't have as much bulk, you can't keep that kneecap sitting in line very well, which affects the whole knee. It's not necessarily causing exactly his um, bursa problem here, but it's part of the whole issue as far as um, if he's weaker, if he's tilted here, he's weaker here, and therefore he tightens on this side. The tighter he is here, the more it irritates that bursa. Okay, we've just been working on Chris's knee. Now we talked about how this is was sitting this way, and it's pretty tight, but I've just been loosening up all the soft tissue through here and his ITB, a bit of strip, we've been stretching out this patella and now if you look at this, see I can get quite a bit of movement now. So that's going to be really good for him because he won't be so tight down on this side so it won't be sort of tilted as much and that will give him a better chance to work on his VMO. The other thing about this is this really isn't a lateral tracking issue so people have problems when the patella tracks, tracks far too much laterally. If you just squeeze your thigh, Chris, you'll see that his patella naturally 
goes up and goes laterally, which is normal. That's a normal groove thing. Let it relax again for me, Chris. Go again. You can see how that moves over the side a little bit, but he does the same thing on this one. So if you look at this one, just squeeze for me, Chris, and relax. See how see that? You can see it shift back there. Squeeze again, and then relax. So he's got a natural lateral shift, which is normal. So his isn't about, oh, it's shifting this way. It's about his is tilted this way, which gives him all the tightness here, and then ends up with that ITB friction syndrome, that bursitis down on this side. So let's go in the gym and see what we're doing for the VMI and the glutes. So we're doing one-legged ball squats. Um, we're doing step downs um, and trying to get his hip control a little bit better on that side. So when he stands, when he runs and lands on that leg, he's not actually letting his knee roll rotate into internal rotation. He's he's a lot more external rotation strength, so he's a lot more in line here. And again, if he's not coming out of alignment, what that will mean is he won't get as irritated through there, just through, through simple mechanics. Okay. Yeah, go with Chris again. Now I'm just going to show you the exercise we're doing for this ITB syndrome. So with Chris, remember, he's got a weakened VMO here. So we're trying to do a one-legged ball squat. So he's pushing in laterally against the ball here, which is switching on his stabilizer here. But the main thing we're talking about is his glutes and his hip stabilizers on this side. Okay, so we're working on all the work on that left hip to keep his knee in line. So when he runs, when he lands, he needs to be landing with his foot in line. So his foot needs to straighten up a bit, Chris. And <laughs> that's it. Okay, so we want to we want to practice how he's going to land, and he, he's got to think. Okay, the middle of my kneecap needs to be over the middle of my foot, so second and third toe. So he needs to make sure when he's doing this exercise, that knee is sitting in line. It's not rolling inwards. So if you go through a, a squat for me, Chris. So he's sitting back, trying to keep that knee from rolling in. He puts the lateral pressure through here, which gets his glutes. His external rotator is going on that side, and it's just trying to keep that pelvis level. It's very important that the abductors, the glute medius, keep that pelvis up on the level. He's not allowed to rotate too much, so he's got to, when he comes down, his shoulders got to be even a little bit more, so his left and right shoulders come forward evenly. And this is what's going to build up his whole motion control. So his control of movement on his left leg needs to be stable. So when he runs, he's level, and he's in line here. And once he does that, that's the, that's the movement sorted, so he stops getting the ITB problem here, because as soon as he rolls in, he'll get that ITB problem. But also, this is what's going to build that VMI. If he's in line, he's doing a one-legged squat, and he's in line with his pelvis, his VMO is going to tone up, and it's going to build in size. And ultimately, that's what's going to help stabilize that kneecap and keep it in line as well. All right, here's Chris doing a step down. now. With this one, it's a lot harder motion control. So with with Chris, it's a lot harder him controlling the knee. So he doesn't want this knee rolling in. He's really got to focus on keeping it out. And again, this builds up the tone through this VMO. Um, but this one's more about control and his strength. And he has to work very hard, trying to keep that knee out, practicing his stepping down and back, which is what he's going to be doing when he's running. That eccentric control keeping this pelvis level. See how he drops that pelvis a little bit? So he's got to keep the right hip a little bit higher, which makes him work on his left side a little bit harder. And he's using a mirror. So what he's doing this is a really good thing to do, is he's using a mirror here to work on his control and give that a little bit of guidance.